Welcome back to Mycology Exploration. Home Mycology Made Easy and simply what works for us. That's all we're doing here. <laughs> Friends, we're just sharing what works for us. The husband and I have been married for 22 years. <laughs> we're Gen Xers and we love planet Earth and we are obsessed with mycology, the study of fungi all versions of fungi. I mean, it's the network under the ground that connects nature and the trees. It's fascinating. And so many of you ask what type of mushrooms we grow, and that's not our focus. It's on the process. Because whether you're growing or foraging and identifying, it's a process. It's knowledge and intelligence and learning through experimenting. And it really matters your weather, the humidity, the moisture, the temperature where you are when growing mushrooms. And so all of us are in different conditions. So that really is what matters most is the condition and mushrooms grow regionally. And so we love lion's mane the very most. And if there's one mushroom we want to clone to perfection is lion's mane. We love it and we love cooking with it and we have friends and neighbors that love our lion's mane mushrooms. We do not sell a thing. We grow for a hobby. We're a husband and wife. We have a family and this is about growing and experimenting and learning. And we love connecting with you guys and showing you what works for us. So one of you asked, <laughs> to see our clones and transfers. And we would love to show you because it looks a little bit different with no pour jars. We always recommend these clear versus the quilted because it makes it difficult to see, but you can still see if you have quilted, it's okay. So what we do is kind of look through, see here, and then ultimately it's easier to look through the bottom of the jar when you're using no pour jars. What we do is just take a very small clone, which is just a sampling, a very, very tiny, tiny, tiny sliver of a fresh mushroom or a wet mushroom. So if you could get your hands on a fresh or wet mushroom, you can simply transfer. And I like to do a transfer right out of the middle. And so I will cut open the mushroom down the middle and take a sample from the cap side and the stem side. And so I like to take two to three cloning transfers right off of the wet mushroom and then we recommend in many of our videos to start with water agar. You know, when we first started growing, we learned quickly that spores were not what we wanted to work with. <laughs> and I think a lot of people realize pretty quickly when growing mushrooms that spores are not the way to go. It takes a really long time. There's a lot of contamination. You're just not getting best fruits. I mean, I could talk on and on about that. And so being able to put spore or your clone, which is just a sampling, a sliver of a fresh or wet mushroom to agar. And when it's water agar, it, it grows so much slower because there's no nutrients or sugars to feed on. And so you have a less, ri less risk for contamination when you use the water agar method that we recommend. However, we have been skipping the water agar. We don't use spores at all anymore. And so if you have spores, you can definitely put that to water agar and then go to the MEA and MYA like we recommend. And if you're new here, we have a few videos explaining this three plate method of water agar to MEA to MYA for rhizomorphic growth. It works for us. It really works for us. However, the husband has been experimenting with skipping the water agar and going straight to a light MEA. And so that's what we did was we went straight from a, 
the clone to a light MEA. Then we did a first transfer to another light MEA, so two dishes of light MEA. And then we went to MYA. And I have some more MYA in here in the still air box right here, ready to go, clean and ready to go. And I fully thought these would need two light MEAs and then two MYAs, but they are so good that I think we're gonna put them straight to liquid culture. And any of the agar that we have left over here, we'll just put straight to bird seed because we don't wanna waste any of it. If it looks really good and we have enough for liquid culture or slurries, we'll just put the agar straight to bird seed. So if you wanna put it straight to bird seed, it's easy. All you have to do is cut three to five little slivers and drop it in your bird seed and make sure that it's not sitting on top. Make sure that the little agar pieces are down in your bird seed. And then again, you're gonna shake your bird seed at 30 and 60% colonization. If you're moving it straight to a liquid culture, which is what we're gonna be doing, liquid culture and bird seed on these to not waste any of it because it looks so good. When I go to liquid culture, I do as thin of three slivers as I can, three thin slivers, and then we mix, 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 stir the jar, stir the jar so that it breaks up the agar and you have beautiful liquid culture. So in here, these are actually a clone. So you can see they're a little bit darker because this is actually the wet mushroom, so not a transfer. Those are clone in there. This is a transfer. So the clones, again, they're a little bit darker. It's a wet mushroom. So what we did on these in the still air box is that was a clone. It went straight to a light MEA. And we're going to try going straight from a light MEA to the MYA. <laughs> we're going to see if we can skip and go from light MEA to MYA and do two plates. So we're just experimenting right now. This one is, was, is the third plate. So you're gonna clone, and then you do transfers from the clone. So this one is a third transfer, and in here is just the first clone. And again, we are really experimenting with just this light MEA and the MYA because we're getting so much rhizomorphic, but we're not having contamination. I mean, I've even got this one over here that you can tell something bounced a little bit, but it still looks amazing. Look at the rhizomorphic growth in there. You can see the antlers, the branches. They're just beautiful. They look great. All of them look great. And so when I take a transfer, I'm just going for little tiny rectangles or triangles and the thinnest sliver I can get. We use X-Acto knives here. So we have an X-Acto set. And what I'm doing is just taking the lightest sliver. So let me show you. Let's get over here. So what I'm going to do is come around the outside where you see the rhizomorphic, the antlers. And though, that's where I'm going to take the samples, the transfers. And I'm just going to pick the very best ones, the cleanest ones for the liquid culture and the slurry, because we're doing it all, we're experimenting. <laughs> And I'm going to take it from the outside, the smallest, thinnest ones that I can. See how small that is in the center? That was the transfer I took before. So your transfer will sit right in the middle 
So see how small it was? The smaller, the better. You don't need big pieces. The smaller, the better. And then really slivers for your liquid culture. You don't want big, thick pieces of agar in your liquid culture. They're not gonna dissolve. It's not gonna work out, really thin. So stick around the outside edges where it's antlers and thicker white mycelium. You're looking for rhizomorphic. Tomatose is fluffy. Rhizomorphic is more antler. So you can see the transfer right in the middle there. Well, I hope you guys are enjoying these short topical videos that are kind of more like a live stream. It's just me and the camera going through and showing you as opposed to the edited voiceover videos that we did before because a lot of you really wanted to see what was going on. And so I wanna show you a little tip here. My heater just popped on, so I apologize for the air if you can hear that. But I wanted to show you here what I do is we have this space and I just put the table up against the wall where the, the armholes for the still air box are facing the wall so the air's not getting in. I mean, my heater just popped on and so no air is blowing in and I use paper towels and just push it in. And so there's alcohol, I spray alcohol. I have this spray bottle I just fill with alcohol and so I spray it all, I use gloves, and then I just move the table out where I can stand between the table and the wall. And I make sure the air is off whenever I do that so no air is getting in. And then I just do everything inside the still air box. So before I take any transfers out of these, of course they'll be sterilized and clean before going into the still air box and then I'll, I'll clean again. <laughs> I over spray, over clean, sterilization, clean environment is everything when you're growing mushrooms, everything. So again, the idea is to move out of spores into a liquid culture or a slurry so that you can grow mushrooms whenever you want. You just keep them in a jar and you use a syringe and then you can use that syringe in your bird seed or grain jars. And we do the, the, the holes on the top of the grain jars for the syringe to just be able to put your liquid culture straight in. So I hope this makes sense. And I hope this explains the process a little bit more because we've had a lot of questions. And again, it doesn't matter the type of mushroom that you're growing, it's really the same process. And you just adjust around the type of mushroom. Thank you for joining. Thank you for subscribing. Much love, friends.